Good morning, it is time for Cup of Hope. I'm Stephanie Winslow. I'm so glad to be with you this morning, bringing to you a message from the Word of God, our only source of hope. And today we are gonna talk about hope, one of my most favorite topics in all of the world, um, because it is the thing that helps us get through to the next thing, to cross over whatever it is, to cross through, to, to be able to just bear down and, and, and have the strength to walk in whatever it is that we are walking through. And it is, it is the hope of Jesus Christ, knowing that he is faithful to keep his promise, knowing that he has come to rescue, restore, and redeem, and that everything that is happening on this earth, he will bring good out of it somehow, some way in his time. So we can trust him with that. We can leave all of our, our burdens, all of our disappointments, all of our frustrations, all of the tricky things that we're walking through, we can leave it all at his feet before him and be able to trust him uh, with it. He can make it into something beautiful. The Bible tells us that he turns ashes into beauty. He makes ashes beautiful. So what we look at is, is all broken apart, all destroyed. God makes something beautiful out of it. So let's lift up our cups this morning and ask the Lord to fill us up with the hope that he has in store for us today. God is indeed faithful. And um, today I want to talk to you about uh, a, a song, <clears throat> a song that has been just pivotal uh, and my journey over the last, um, what is this year, 21? So it's it's been about five years that this song has been a part of my life. Um, in 2016, we sold our company business, our family business, and um, I ended up sitting for a period and, and God had been talking to me about writing and speaking, writing and speaking. I just kept... Anytime I would, I would dig into scripture or anytime I would have a quiet time, those words, write and speak, write and speak, they would just be spoken <laughs> to me and my heart. And I just felt this nudge to begin to write. And this song for me was the, the song that shaped and molded my whole writing experience. So when I uh, was writing, oftentimes I would have the song playing in the background. This song is called I Have This Hope and it's by 10th Avenue North. So let me read it to you today. As I walk this great unknown, questions come and questions go. Was there purpose for the pain? And did I cry these tears in vain? I don't want to live in fear. I want to trust that you are near. Trust that your grace can be seen in both triumph and tragedy. I have this hope in the depth of my soul. In the flood or the fire, you are with me and you won't let go. This song God used to speak to my heart because he was calling me into this place of unknown. And what I think is interesting is that we, we have all lived in our lives kind of with this, this belief that, that the next step was known, that, that tomorrow I'm, I know kind of what I'm doing or we, we make all these grand plans and COVID has kind of totally re, reset our understanding of what is known. Our way of living, the walking around with masks on, all these things that are new, they help make us feel so uh, uncomfortable because they're unknown. And we just, we don't know what we don't know. But the truth is that we never have. We never really have known what tomorrow holds or what this evening holds. But yet we have lived our lives in such a way to, to claim that we did. Well, at least I'm speaking for myself. And so when God asked me to begin this journey of writing, it was a very unknown place for me. I, I'm a business person, <laughs> right? I'm not a writer. I'm not talking about my emotions. I'm not uh, you know, wanting to, to share all of our family laundry about walking through addiction, but that is exactly what God was asking of me. And he was asking of me as this same 
um, these, the lyrics to this song say that it's, I want to trust you, that you are near. Trust that your grace can be seen in both triumph and tragedy. I, I knew that I could have this hope. There was something deep inside of me that God was going to take this mess that my life felt like, this mess that we were walking through um, with, with alcoholism, with my brother. I, I, I knew that we were going to take he was going to take all of that. There was something inside of me that spurred me on toward uh, what God was going to do. I trusted in him. Even though there were many days when I was just bawling on the floor um, as I was writing the story, like walking through all these things that we had been through. And it is raw and it was real <laughs> and uh, it hurt. But I kept asking God, and it's this song again, is questions they come and they and questions go. And I, I did ask God, was there purpose for this pain? All of these tears that I'm crying, are they gonna be in vain? I asked God these very same questions and he gave me this song to help push me into the direction that he needed me to go as I started writing the book, Ascent to Hope. Um, and it really was my ascent to hope because I was at a place where I didn't feel like I knew that in, in my insides that there was hope, but I didn't feel it. I couldn't, I couldn't get my mind there when I, well, and a lot of it was because I was trying to be in charge. I was trying to grab hold of this control and I wanted to have it so tight in my hands. And what's funny um, is that God, as he does, he kind of brings things full circle. And uh, so this song was written by 10th Avenue North. And many of you know that I've recently relocated to uh, the West Palm Beach area of Florida. And um, do you know where 10th Avenue North is from? <laughs> they are from West Palm Beach. And I was driving down the highway one day and I see this road sign across, you know, heading... Uh, down south a ways and there's a road sign that says 10th Avenue North and this thought hit me, hmm, I wonder, I wonder if they're from here. <laughs> and sure enough, they are. They're, they were, they, these boys from this band grew up in, um, in this area. So how crazy <laughs> is that, that this song God has used to so impact my life and then he planted me here, now sharing this song with you, just miles down the road from where this the song kind of originated and um, where these these guys grew up but I want to read you some verses that really hammer home I think the 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 lyrics to this song and give a scriptural reference for why these lyrics are, are good and right and true Hebrews six nineteen, and you can even see it on my wall we have this hope and I'm reading to you from the Holman Christian Standard Bible we have this hope as an anchor for our lives, safe and secure. Other versions say of this, like this one, this anchor for our soul, firm and secure. This one says for our lives, safe and secure. Verse 18 uh, of Hebrews 6 actually says, seize the hope set before you. We have hope. There is this hope of Christ Jesus, that he will do what he says he will do, that our salvation, our lives are made secure and safe in him. We have to grab a hold of it. We have to seize that hope. We have to wrap our, our, our hands around it and hug it, and hug it in tight and not let it go because um, it's there available for us. We just have to grab hold of it. And Psalm 39, 7 says, And now, O Lord, for what, what do I wait? My hope is in you. When we have the hope of Jesus, there, nothing, there's nothing else that we have to wait for. Yes, we have questions. Yes, we have things that are sort of unresolved. But our waiting, that, that longing for our, from our souls, that need for something more, something bigger, greater than ourselves, it's gone. What do I have else? What else do I need? What else do I have to wait for? Because I have Jesus. He is the answer to all of my need. He is the answer to every question I could possibly have. He is all I need. 
Christ is all I need. He is my hope. So I have nothing I need to wait for. So that was Psalm 39, 7. And then lastly, I want to read this verse to you. Hebrews 10, 23. It says, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. We can have hope because he who promised is faithful. God and, and Christ, they are not like uh, humans. We make promises and then we don't live up to our word oftentimes. There's, our hearts have been broken by men and women around us because as humans, we, we don't always have the capacity to, to carry out what we've promised or we want to, maybe we want to, but we just can't because we aren't all powerful. We aren't almighty. We aren't omniscient and omnipotent. We don't have all of the characteristics that God has and so we fall short. We fail. Our promises don't endure. They don't last. But God in Christ, his promises, they do last their promises last and so we can put our full hope in him <clears throat> i have this hope in the depth of my soul and i'm praying for you that you have this hope as well if you haven't experienced it yet if you don't yet know who jesus is or you haven't met him i'm praying that he would give you that open door if it's reaching out to me and saying hey steph I've heard you talk about Jesus every morning, but I just really don't know him. I want to know who he is. I encourage you to just reach out and ask. I am so happy to talk to you about him. If you do, if you have known Christ for a long time, <clears throat> excuse me, and you've forgotten <laughs> that, that deep sense of hope that, that maybe you once had, or maybe you just haven't ever had it. You haven't dove fully into that kind of hope. I'm praying over you too that in the depth of your soul, through the floods and through the fire, you will know that he is with you and he will not let go. He is with you and he will not let go. I'm praying that for you today. Let's pray together now. Dear Jesus, Lord, we just come before you and I am overwhelmed, Lord, this morning because of how good you are. You are so good, Father, that you give us this opportunity to live in relationship with you, that I can have hope today, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what we are facing as, as a nation or as, as family units or individuals, Lord, that you're walking us sometimes through floods and fires and whatever it is, Lord, you tell us that you are there with us in the midst of it. You'll never leave us. You'll never walk away. You are right there with us in the midst of it. So God, I thank you that we can stand firm and secure on that promise. We can have hope today because you are faithful to keep your promises. God, I pray for those of us uh, who are struggling to, to have hope today. They're walking through difficult situations or just we feel like we've, you know, we've just been so disappointed by people or by, by situations and circumstances and just really like... You're asking me to have hope, but you don't even know what is going on in my life. For, for those who are facing those days today, oh God, I pray that you would just meet them right where they're at. Give them the courage to reach out and ask uh, for an introduction to you, an introduction to Christ. And Father, if it would be through, through me, I, I, I would be so honored and grateful for that opportunity. Or Lord, just open up the doors in, in their own circles and communities. Lord, wherever that is, may they find Christ. Lord, I know that it is your desire that we know you more and more intimately. And the more we know you, the more we hunger after you because we taste and see that you are so good. You are so good, God. So Father, I just pray um, over us today that you would ignite our hope, that you would inspire hope in us as we get to, to live this life and recognize that Jesus is faithful to keep his promises. Lord, you are faithful to your promises. 
I pray that you would receive all of the glory, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with me this morning, and I, I, I just know, I know that God will do what he promises he will do. He will be faithful to hear our prayers and answer them, so I know, I'm trusting that today you will be ignited with a, a fresh hope, that he will meet you right where you're at. He will uh, infuse in you that, that deep sense of hope for the situation that you are walking through because you are fixing your eyes on him. You are leaning into him and that's all that matters. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow in a new location. It's gonna be a surprise. Uh, I'm so excited to, to share with you what's in store uh, for tomorrow. But until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.